Proverbs chapter number one, Proverbs chapter number one. And uh, while you're turning there, let me follow up on some of the things I said uh, earlier. It, it's, it's God's been good to us and he has put us in a place to reach a lot of people. And I'm excited about it. And I'm excited about the Sunday school classes starting. And you say, Pastor, how's that going to work? Not here on uh, the property. And uh, it's, it's, it's going to work just like you had a had a class here on the property, and uh, it's going to work well. He says, has this ever been done before? Yes, this has been done before. And I think of uh, Brother Hiles, who built great, great churches, and uh, he would go to knock in neighborhoods and say, I'll come sweep out your garage if you'll let me use it for a Sunday school class. And uh, I said, you know, it. I mean, you build it for some decent sized churches. And so, um, you know, and so, um, you know, so it has been done before. And so I'm excited about this. And uh, we're going to be reaching into uh, six counties before the year is over. And so uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about those things. Last year, the beginning of the year, I set a goal for us to double our Sunday morning crowd. Some of you forgot about that, didn't you? And the Lord gave us good growth last year. Last year, we laid a foundation. We'll, we'll hit that this year. Um, or I'll be looking for a new staff and, um, and, a, and new church people as well. But uh, uh, no, we're going to hit that this year. And so we laid the foundation last year, and it's going to be an exciting, exciting thing. Now, not everybody wants to grow. And uh, I, I'm not trying to, you know, be, be negative tonight, uh, but, um, you know, there's, there's, there's issues we've had to deal with in recent months, and it stems from, where does that stem from? It stems from people not wanting to grow. And they get satisfied with their little thing, and this is my little kingdom, and this is my little, and this is, I don't want to grow, we're growing. And you say, well, I don't want to grow. We are growing. You may not, but we are growing. And uh, so just be, just be ready for that and, uh, uh, and uh, the opportunity that's before us. And so uh, I just wanted to uh, follow up on that uh, to give you time to get to the book of Proverbs. Are you there? Proverbs chapter number 1. And uh, we're going to read verse 7 to begin with. And then I'm going to remind you of what uh, we began, the topic we began two weeks ago. And uh, I cut it off because of the length. And then I'll pick up with part 2 tonight. And so I'll read verse number seven, get us uh, uh, into it. I'll lay a foundation, review some things that we went over a couple weeks ago, and uh, give you the, the new things tonight. So Proverbs 1, verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom instruction. and instruction. That first phrase, the fear of the Lord. We're going to look at that phrase. We saw it several times two weeks ago. We're going to see it several times tonight. That phrase, the fear of the Lord. Uh, we know this. I'm not the first preacher to say this, but if God says it once, we ought to pay attention. If he says it a dozen times, uh, we should pay real close attention to it. And so uh, we're going to look at that again. And we use that phrase, the fear of the Lord. And we're talking about the reverent, dealing with the reverent, having reverence to God, having reverence to him as a person, uh, him as deity, him as the Almighty, uh, Him as Jehovah, our Creator, having reverence to God. So we're going to pick up tonight dealing with the reverent. Father, help us as we look once again in Your Word. Uh, may we take these truths that You have uh, preserved in Scripture. Uh, we know that uh, these are Your words, and we know that Your Word has the answer uh, to what we need in life. May we pay close attention to Your Word tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look at dealing with the reverent, we want to see that word reverence. I'll give you the definition again. It's fear mingled with respect and esteem. Often we say the fear of the Lord, and someone who's not familiar with Scripture uh, may think it's that we're supposed to uh, tremble in fear like God is going to uh, do something bad to us, or we fear Him as we would if we get scared of, uh, of the dark. Those of you that are still scared of the dark, and, and uh, I say, well, it's not the dark I'm scared of, it's the things in the dark that I can't see that I'm scared of. Well, uh, you know, well, however you define that, uh, it's not that same fear, it's that respect that fear is mingled with respect and esteem. Uh, you know, my, my, my heart starts beating because I'm in the presence of, the, of greatness. Or, or that, that respect, have such great respect in awe of. 
And friend, if there's people that we had garner that respect, how much more should we be in awe of God? How much more? I don't, I don't understand it. We can get this way because of pride. If, if there was somebody, you know, like not our current president, but like a, a president that we respected or somebody had great respect, I didn't know what to say when I ran into them. I didn't know what to say when I was in their presence. Oh, well, yeah, we, we feel real comfortable telling God how it should be, though. We feel real comfortable telling God what he did wrong. We feel real comfortable having all kinds of things to God about this and this and this. There needs to be some awe in who we're talking to. Now, I'm not minimizing the fact that we have a God that will let us bring our needs to him. He will let us vent, if you will. I'm not minimizing that. But I, there ought to be some awe with that. There ought to be some respect with that. And so uh, reverence to God will not allow you to ignore him. Christians, who, those who are believers who ignore God, you don't have respect for him. If you ignore him. So I love him. Well, do you have the reverence for him? You cannot ignore him, his commandments, nor his desires. What's happened in our nation is we've lost the reverence for God and for spiritual things. You know, it, it, and I'll get on a little rabbit trail here, but it certainly applies. You know, we ought to be some reverence for, for God. There ought to be some reverence for this book. There ought to be some reverence for His church. There ought to be some reverence for His man. There ought to be reverence for His people. You know, in... And just because you have the freedom to get on the internet and curse God and curse spiritual things doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's, it's, we get flippant with spiritual things and we ought to have an awe, that reverence. So how do we get that? It requires a submission and a need to please out of realization that God is worthy due to who he is. God's good to us. God blesses us. But if he did not bless us, he's still worthy of the reverence because of who he is. Not just what he bestows on us, but who he is. He's worthy of that reverence, that awe, that fear mingled with respect and esteem. There should be no one that we esteem higher than God himself. I, for one, am, am not one of these that say you shouldn't esteem one man. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have a meaning to have respect for him. No, we ought to have respect for one another. We ought to have respect for those who have earned it. But there should be such a greater respect where there's no comparison when it comes to our God, we're dealing we're with the reverence. Now, let me just mention the first seven that I went through. I'm not going to stop and, and teach them all over again, although they'll, those of you that were here two weeks ago, it'll be like you hear them for the first time tonight. And so uh, I will mention them to you as we go through them. And then uh, I just have uh, five to teach tonight. And so uh, we'll get through those in plenty of time. But I said, number one, the reverent man has positioned himself to gain knowledge. We saw that in our text verse. Uh, because we have all of God, I'm now in position to get knowledge from Him. People aren't getting knowledge from God because they're not, they, they don't think He's got the knowledge they need. Number two, only the reverent man can have true wisdom. Because if we don't put ourselves in position to get the wisdom because we respect who He is, you know, wisdom is available for every man. But we've got to think enough of God to put everybody else aside and say, let me just go get the answer from God. That, that's because I have that much respect. I, I revere him. And only the reverent man can have true wisdom. We saw this in chapter 9, verse 10. There's a difference in book learning and facts and the wisdom that comes from God. Number three, we said the reverent man hates what God hates. I have such respect for God, that fear mingled with respect and esteem, that if God hates something, I'm going to hate it. And by the way, God doesn't hate any man. He might hate what men do, but he sent his son to die for every man because he loved them. Uh, 
But I'm to hate what God hates. Well, I'm trying to decide how I feel about that. God's already decided for us. Well, does God hate it? Then I'm supposed to hate it. Why? Because he's God. Well, I need an explanation. of. I don't need an explanation. My explanation is God hates it. I hate it. So if God hates it, then I'm to hate it. Uh, number four, the reverent man lives longer than he otherwise would. We saw this in chapter 10 and verse 27. Uh, you live in awe of God. You're going to make better decisions. You're going to have blessings of God. Number five, the reverent man has confidence due to his proper view and relationship with God. We saw this in chapter 14, verse 26. If you have a proper view in relationship with God due to that respect and esteem, you're going to have greater confidence. Why? Because my confidence is, is, is in Him. You know, a lot of confidence problems can go away if we put our confidence in the right place. If we put it in Him, if we put it in His Word. So how do you know you're right? I don't have to know I'm right. I just got to know that He's right. And I can have great confidence in that. And it's that relationship we have, that proper view. We said, number six, the reverent man has a great enjoyment in life. Chapter 14, verse 27 is where we saw that. The reverent man is going to enjoy life. The, the one who has the proper view of God, the proper respect, the awe of God is going to have a greater enjoyment in life. Um, when God is your focus in your life, and you're focused on Him, you're good, that's pretty enjoyable. You know, I, you know there's a lot of people who, who aren't saved. There's a lot of people who might be saved and have never grown and don't have a true relationship as far as a, that, a relationship of fellowship with God. They might look and say, I don't understand. That does, why, does that, why is that fun? Well, if you, if you got around God, you would learn how satisfying it is just to be in the presence of God. And there's greater enjoyment in life and if I hate what God hates, those things that God hates isn't going to mess up my life. And so, therefore, I can enjoy it better. Then we said number seven. We saw this in chapter 15 and verse 16. The reverent man is better with his little than pursuing treasures. It's better to have God than all the world's wealth. It's better to obey Him. Well, I don't always have the right... Well, you know... Being in awe and revering God is a, is a good enough motive. I'm going to do this because of who God is. You know, when, when I was growing up and my brothers weren't doing what they should do, and, and uh, you know, my, my dad would come, and when he had to get on to them, he would say, you know, you're, you're going to do this, and, and, then we, and they did it. Because I stayed close to mom, but um, it didn't always get done because I just have this undying love in my heart for my father. It was like dad and he's in charge and he can make life real miserable for you if you don't do what he says. Now, we got to do what we do because we love God. But we're old, rotten flesh, aren't we? And there's sometimes... You know, and I and I would say I love God. You love God, but boy, if we just stay in that respect, in that esteem, in that awe, even when we're not right, even when our heart's not where it should be, if we keep the proper perspective of He's God, He's created all things. Now, try and have your heart right every day. But let's be honest; it's not where it should be all the time. But even when it's not right, if I have a fear of God because I know who He is and, and I know that at any moment, if He chose to, He could stop this heart in my chest. And it's His air I'm breathing and keeping that, that, that fear mingled with that, that respect and esteem. And, and, and uh, boy, that'll help us. But life, the reverent man is better off with his little than pursuing treasures. And of course, that is teaching that you know, there's some treasures you can't have unless you lose the awe of God because you're going to have to give up relationship with God to have certain treasures. It's better to be content with God 
Now we get to the second part, and so we've, we've reminded ourselves of that definition of, of reverence and being reverent and having that fear mingled with respect and esteem because of who He is. And matter of fact, that's why we don't use God's name in vain. That's why it's certainly not a curse word. It, it, we must be very careful with that. There's a reverence to that. Uh, there's, a, there's a reverence to His name, and we should be very careful because everybody in this world uh, disrespects His name. Boy, and they've lost, we've lost the reverence. And so let, let's look at some things tonight. Chapter 15, verse 33 is where we'll start. And number 8, chapter 15, verse 33. And the Bible says, the fear of the Lord, there's that phrase again, is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Now keep that in mind. And number eight, the reverent man understands wisdom comes as a result of his awe of God. Now let me say that again so you can get it. The reverent man understands wisdom comes as a result of his awe of God. Let's read verse 33 again. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Now, I would say everyone in here would say they want wisdom. The fear of the Lord is what brings you wisdom. The, uh, the reverent man understands wisdom comes as a result of his awe of God. Now, notice verse 33 as well. This says, and before honor is humility. Now, Every, we would want honor. Would you want honor? Let's wait for just a moment. All right. How, we would say, I want to be honored, and I want honor that er, we, we earn honor. Well, you know, if you really want honor, you've got to have humility first. There's a lot of people running around this world, a lot of Christians I know say, I, I need honor, I need honor, but you can't humble yourself. Humility comes before honor. Just like having that reverence for God comes before wisdom. Well, I want wisdom. Well, you've got to have reverence for God to get it. Because you've got to position yourself to a place to have it. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. So God say is, it's, it, it, this is existing. So that reverence is the instruction of wisdom. You cannot have the instruction of wisdom without it. You, there's a difference in having some instruction because you have to go. Anybody ever been to one of these driving classes that you had to take because you've got a ticket? Um, how much did you really learn? Um, perhaps you... You're in a setting where you're like, I, you know, it's like, you know, and I know everybody would say this, but you say, but just really a subject that you know. And, okay. But, Cheney, you're a chef, aren't you? Look at him being all modest. Miss Carol, is he a chef? She is. Okay, he's going to be cooking for us tonight after the service. And so... <laughs> If he was sitting in instruction from, you know, somebody with an easy bake oven, <laughs> you know, he's going to be like, I don't have much respect for this eight-year-old girl. I mean, what is she going to teach me? Um, probably not the best illustration I've ever used, but um, the reason why we get wisdom is because of who God has that standing. He knows what he's talking about. We're not going through a class just to check a box. I got to take this next class. So we're not going to get what we need. Right. I mean, I, I, w I remember going through Bible college and I picked up some things, but I didn't pick up a whole lot of things I could have picked up because it's like, I just got to get through this. You know, I got to get back to the Sunshine State. You know, I was just like, I got to get through this. And I'm checking boxes. I got to get through this. Now, I find myself looking back now and remembering some things that I gleaned. 
But you get the point I'm making. I even remember back then, there were certain teachers that was like, oh, God, help me. I got to take their... But there were some teachers like, I want to be in that class. Because I, I, they have a, there's a standing. They know something. But when it comes to God, it shouldn't be, oh, I did my time with God. I got out of the Sunday school class. I got out of... No, it's the fear of the Lord. It's God. I got to... What, what's he teaching me today? What's he instructing me in today? On those days where he gives you that extra blessing and just that lesson out of nowhere, it's like, oh my goodness, look what God has given me. I got to pay attention. Some days the lessons are a little harder. But it's because of who God is. It's like, I, I've, got, I've got to get this. The reverent man understands wisdom comes as a result of his awe of God. If we have to humble ourselves before we achieve honor, those who are the high achievers, if you do use sports, those that, that, that achieve, they've had to humble themselves to do what is necessary to get there. They've had, they've had to humble themselves under coaches. And, 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 and so that's something for us to be reminded of. No, number nine, let's look at chapter 16. Verse number six. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Number nine, the reverent man avoids evil. See, how, how does this happen? It's just because he, you know, he's reverent, he knows what's evil, this and that. Notice that verse that says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Now, there are several applications to the first part of that verse. Who is mercy and truth? Christ is mercy and truth. And so as a child of God, we have mercy and truth. And at, our, at salvation, we're purged. Now, a practical application of that is the more that we yield to mercy and truth, the more that sin is purged from us. There are some things that you ought to have victory over that you don't go back to. Why? Because of mercy and truth. And so that iniquity is... Per- and notice, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And so as God purges us, we depart from evil. We stay away from it. And now I remind you that evil is sin with, with, with intent. It is something that's, done, that's harmful to somebody else. And, you know, sin is harmful enough to, to you as an individual, but it's that sin that's going to harm somebody else. And so we want to avoid that. How do we do it? Well, it's that I'm in all that mercy and truth. And the more that I yield to it, the more it purges me. And then the more that I'm going to avoid evil. And we can reference this back to hating. The reverend man hates what God hates. And so by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Number 10, look at chapter 19. I'm moving quickly tonight. Chapter number 19. In verse 23, this is an important one. Chapter 19, verse 23. Notice this verse, follow along with me. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. And he that hath it shall abide in turmoil, shall abide in conflict, shall abide in satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. I'm going to get ahead of myself. I need to make this point. You know why a lot of times Christians get caught up in evil? Because they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied with their role. They're not satisfied with what God has done. They're not satisfied. Why aren't they satisfied? It all stems back to the fear of the Lord. It all stems back to having the proper perspective of who God is. Well, I'm not satisfied. We do what God has set some things in order. And if we really did not think we were on par with God, we'd be satisfied with His order in the church, His order in the home, or the path that He has chosen for us to walk. Because I am in, it's who am I to question the creator of the universe? Who am I? to put a question mark uh, where God has put a period on the one who has spoke all the stars into existence. Who am I? It is Him 
who keeps my heart beating. It, it is, who am I to, do, to, to, to question him? And we don't have that peace and because we're not satisfied then we find the evil. But notice what the verse says. And I'll give you number 10. The reverent man is at peace internally. You know, if, if you keep God in, in where he should be in your life, the perspective, who he is, that fear mingled with reverence and awe, you'll be satisfied with what he's given you. I don't believe that. Well, I believe the Bible. You'll be satisfied with what he's allowed and not allowed to be in your life. Because we sing the song, God makes no mistake. I'm afraid a lot of Christians who sing that song are liars. I'm, I'm, I'm just being blunt tonight. First time. Because we, we act like we don't really believe that. But I, I know God makes no mistake. Well, Pastor, I don't understand it like you understood it. You're missing it. I didn't say I understood it. I've just accepted that God makes no mistake. And if I'm trying to understand it internally, internally, I get no peace. Well, if, 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 I, if, if God could, if I could have an explanation, how about his ways or above our ways? Well, that's easy to say amen to, and we ought to say amen to it, but now we got to go home and live that. And when I got to know, and I got to figure it out, and I got to see what God's going to do, we got to get to the place of if God can keep the earth on its axis, if God can keep the billions of stars in place and call them by name, then God's probably got what you're facing under control. He's probably done what is best in your life. And because He's God, and everything that exists came from God, I'm going to get to a place where I'm just, God's got it. Well, how's it going to work out? I have no idea. But God knows. Remember when you were a child and, 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 and you know, a parent would say, it's going to be okay. Okay. And that little, little child is just dumb enough to believe. You know, we need to be as Christians just dumb enough that when God says, I got it, okay, is at peace internally. Oh, if you get nothing else tonight, and I do want you to get some other things, but please give me your attention for the next few minutes. Those who do, do not live in that reverence, that fear mingled with reverence and respect of the Lord, allow internal thoughts and passions to exist. And they eventually destroy them from the inside out. You know how Christians are destroyed from bitterness? Because there's something they don't understand. There's something that was done that was maybe a wrong done to them. And why would God allow that? And why does that person get to go on their way and not pay any kind of a price for that? And friend, I don't know the answers to that. You don't know the answers to that. You may never know the answers to that, but it's keeping you awake at night. You got to get to a place to say, I don't know, but God does. And we let those internal thoughts and passions, well, I got to know. Well, God may not want you to know. And if God doesn't want you to know, you've got to realize that the one who hung the stars in space knows a little more than you know, knows a little more than I know, and can handle it completely. And as long as he knows, I'm okay with that. 
Well, Pastor, how do you sleep at night? Usually I start on one side and my, my, my general answer to that is, how do you sleep at night? With the fan on. That's how I sleep at night. Well, don't you ever get worried? and Don't you ever have to? Yes, I do. And then I get upset at myself. So why do I have to figure this out? I don't have to figure it out. Now, there's times where I got to be up praying. I got to say, God, you got to show me the way. And, 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 and he impresses those things on me. But, it, but there's a peace that comes from that because I don't have to know the answer. And, 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 and when a um, church member comes to me and say, Pastor, there's, there's this battle I'm going through. There's a surgery I'm facing. There's a disease I've, I think I deal with. And what, 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 you don't feel anything about it? No, I, I, I do because I want to bear that burden with you. But I don't have to figure out how it's going to end up because of God. And some of you are in turmoil and you don't have to be. Because the Bible says the fear of the Lord tendeth to life. The fact that I have that fear mingled with respect and awe, that reverence, that tends to life. It takes care of life. Pastor, do you think God's the answer to everything. Yeah. But don't you want to know? There's been times in my life I've wanted to know, but I, can, I think I'm to the place now, at least now today, is like, I, I don't think I need to know. Why? Because I sleep better at night just not knowing and knowing that He knows. And if there's something God wants me to know, God has proven in my 50 years that He can allow me to know. But if he doesn't allow me to know, I don't need to know. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. Oh, and he that hath it. Some of you need to put this verse to memory. And he that hath it, the fear of the Lord. I, I'm in awe. I'm still in respect. I still lose awe. That's why some of you, you, you teenagers that are sitting over here and kids in here, you grow up in church, that's a privilege. Don't you lose your awe of God. And one thing that will help them, parents, is don't be, don't, when you get angry, don't be, you, you got problems in your heart and life, and you have questions, don't you question God in front of your kids. I mean, you know what I mean by that. A lot of times, oh, I just need to know from God. Don't complain to God. Well, I prayed about this, and God, God knows. Point them to God. Everybody all right tonight? You can lose and say, and that's really, in an essence, why, why, do, why, do, why do some preacher's kids end up the way they do? Because they have to put up with church people. But anyway, you know, why, why, why do kids that grow up in church, why are they leaving the church and this and that? And there's all kinds of excuses and things out there. But it all comes down to, at some point, we lose in awe of God. Don't get too familiar. He's your familiar friend. He's your best friend. But don't ever lose the respect. And that's why it's good for his church. That's why you need to be involved in their church because that's when God reminds us as a people of who he is and the miracles he does. And, well, here's one that, 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 that if, if God doesn't intercede, we're going to be saying goodbye soon. And then God intercedes. And then we say, only God can do that. He's got it under control. And then there's other times, Pastor, we prayed and, 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 and God still did, didn't change things. Well, God knows. I don't know why God would, would, would allow certain things, but God does. And I can go home and I can grieve and I can sorrow and I can weep over it as we are instructed to do many times in the Bible. But I don't have to have that internal turmoil of trying to figure out the why, the where, because I know that He knows. He says, he that hath it shall abide satisfied. So those that get dissatisfied with the Christian life, if we believe the Bible, does it all go back to we've lost the reverence for God that we should have? Because the Bible says, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. 
abide satisfied. Oh, Pastor, I'm just as recently at church. I just don't feel like I'm getting fed. You, you, you know, you're not you're not upset with the pastor. You've lost the awe of God because it's His Word that's getting preached. It's His Spirit. Well, the the music's just not as Good. Well, I can't use that because it, it keeps getting better and better. <laughs> well, I just not do it. Well, you've lost the, you've lost the awe of God. Um, he shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Boys, I understand this verse. If I want to stay away from evil, I've got to stay with the fear of the Lord. I've got to let him tend to my life. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I, people, there's people who've wronged me. I don't have to seek vengeance on them. It's not my responsibility. It's up to him to decide what should be done and shouldn't be done. I'm, I'm still waiting for God to... Well, see, you're still going to be in turmoil. You know, it's, it's, and, 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 and again, I, I think... I, I, I'm not perfect in this by any stretch, but, but I think I can stand here to say with God's help, I've lived a little bit about what I'm teaching right now. And so when I say this, keep that in mind. And with, with God's help... There's times I've run into people and spoke to them, and the reaction I got was, oh, and I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. They hate me. <laughs> I forgot they don't, I forgot they talk bad. I forgot all about it. You know why? Because I'm not staying up at night worried about it. Amen. Then I'm like, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Won't happen again. We can be at peace if we understand and stay in a place in our mind and our heart of who God is. I've got to mention the last two, chapter 22, verse 4. By, I wrote down the wrong, hold on, let me search through and find the right. Okay, let's, let's skip 22, verse 4. Um, no, there it is. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. I'm losing my mind. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor of life. Okay, number 11. The reverent man re- reaps riches, honor, and fullness of life. Let me just make this statement, and, and, and I'll move to number 12. We'll be done. See, the Bible says, by humility and the fear of the Lord. So you cannot have the fear of the Lord without humility. We've talked about it a couple times. This is a combination of low opinion of self and awe of God. You cannot be in awe of yourself and awe of God. Man, I'm pretty smart. You're in awe of yourself. You're not going to be in awe of God. Pastor, that's for everybody else. That's not for me. You, you're in awe of yourself. You get in God's presence, you ain't going to be too impressed with yourself. And so the reverent man reaps riches. Why? Because that's what humility brings. That's what the fear of the Lord brings. And by the way, riches just isn't money in your bank account, although God does do some of that. There's a lot of riches that God bestows There's honor and fullness of life. Now, we all want to live long lives, but if you live a long, empty life, but God gives a full life. And so your days are full. Your life is full. And when you've lived your life in awe of God, when you get to the end of it, whether it be 20 years, 50 years, or or 100 years, it's full because of the blessings of God. It's full because of the, the answered prayers and the, and, and the things that God did through your life. Why? Because you kept Him 
in that proper place and perspective and kept that reverence for God. Then number 12, chapter 23, verse 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners. But, so if we're not supposed to do that, the scripture is going to tell us what we should do. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. The, number 12, the reverent man remains in awe of God and therefore is it impressed with the way of sinners. The reverent man remains in awe of God and therefore is it impressed with the way of sinners. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. When you're in God's presence and you see Him for who He is and you, and you keep, keep Him in that right uh, uh, relationship and this is the Almighty, this is God. In His holiness and His righteousness. I'm not even worthy to speak His name, but yet I'm His child because of He loved me enough to send His Son. And oh, the blessings, you never lose that awe of God. Then there's not peer pressure that you succumb to from sinners. Now, I've taught you in the past that sinners isn't like we, we're sinners, we all sin. You, when you've been saved, you're still a sinner but saved by grace. And when Proverbs is talking about a sinner, it's talking about a lost man. It's talking about their way. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Well, if you remain in awe of God, you're not impressed with the way of sinners. And if you really grow in your relationship and and spend time with God, and you look at the filth and the idiocy of this world. Now you, you look at you know, the, the, the Hollywood that you see, and even now professional sports, the NBA, and all these others, and you look and you're like, why would anybody want to dress like that? Why would anybody want to look like that? And they spent money to do that. These are rich people. And they, that's the best they could come up with? But oh yeah, how many Christians are like, oh, I got to use the words they use. Oh, I got I to gotta have this product they have. And oh, I've got I've to I've gotta emulate this and that. Well, you're telling on yourself that you're not in awe of God. Because when you're in awe of the one who put the stars in the sky, and you're all of the one who parted the Red Sea, you're all if you're in awe of the one who's conquered death and hell, what sinners do is not impressive. For I've lived long enough and seen God do enough miracles in my life and around me, nothing that takes place in this world is impressive. But you know, I mean. Elon Musk has this much money, and, and, and Warren Buffett has this much money, and this and this and this. Well, my God has everything. Oh, well, do you have what they have? Well, in essence, I do, because God has it, and if he thinks I need it, I know who's going to give it to me. I, I, I know that God can do that. No, I'm going to give you one word. I'm out of time. I did tell you I was going to do two hours, so if only do like an hour and... and <laughs> Let not thine heart envy sinners, but... What's that next word? Be. Don't let the preacher get you in the fear of the Lord on Sunday. And then get out of it till the next Sunday. Don't let the revival come along and get you in it, and then you get out of it. Young people, don't grow up in it while you're in your parents' home, and then when you leave home, you're out of it. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. I'm going to be. Don't lose sight of who he is. Don't lose sight of what he's done. 
And there ought to be some awe, there ought to be some fear mingled with respect and esteem. I know God loves me because of who God is. He is holiness. So if I want to have the right kind of relationship with Him, I'm in such respect and awe of his, how holy is He. Well, we don't take God and apply Him to the definition of holiness. We take the definition of holiness and apply it to God because He is holiness. And whatever definition we can come up with pales in comparison to how holy God is. Because we've never experienced one second in our life in the absence of sin. We can't have a true picture of what holiness really is. But we know He's holy. Say, so how holy is that? He's holier than any of us. And because of that, I have to approach Him in the way that I should approach Him. Pride, we've talked about pride and pride and the fear of the Lord. They can't coexist. This will help us. And all these, 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 these characters help us, but this will help us because if we're not careful, we'll get enamored with this world. We'll get enamored with the American dream. But what God has is greater. Who God is. Well, I've, I've achieved status on social media. I can be an influencer and I, I, can, I, can, I can put this out and it might go viral. And this person did. I know God. I know him. Well, I talked to, I talked to God today. You know, the Almighty. You know, and whenever I get to the place where I think too highly of myself, God is very good at reminding me, us. He's so much above us that we can't even comprehend. That's why we have to have a glorified body, a glorified mind to be in His presence one day. Hey, let's not lose our reverence for God. Let's not lose our reverence for spiritual things. Just because this world has lost it doesn't mean God's people should, should lose it. I mean, the church shouldn't be stuffy and overboard, but there ought to be some reverence in the house of God. There ought to be some reverence to the things of God. Let's not lose the reverence to Him. Remember who you're, if we're not careful, when you pray, it's just, it's just what, this is just what I say, this is what I do. And we lose the reverence, it just becomes a religious exercise to us. But think about it. Next time you have a need, which is like all of us now, because we have needs daily, but when you have a great need, when you go to God and you talk to Him, remember He's the owner of all things. Well, I'm facing something that's too hard. God has a pretty good track record. And when you write the laws of science, you, you can break them. Let's not lose the awe of God. Father, help us tonight as we consider these truths.